The aim of this practical is to perform a Western blot. It is taught as part of the MSc in Molecular Exercise Physiology at the University of Aberdeen. We cast our own gels. Here you see me finishing off a gel. But you can also buy precast gels, which makes things easier. The samples are put on ice to let them thaw. Here I'm filling running buffer to the setup. There are two gels in each tank. The positive electrode is at the bottom, the negative electrode is at the top. So the negatively charged proteins will migrate inside the gel towards the bottom. Here I'm loading the samples. The protein samples contain glycerol, which is heavier than water. It migrates to the bottom, so I have to vortex intensely. Also, the glycerol is quite viscous, like honey, and so I have to take my time when pipetting, because it uh, needs more time in order to migrate into the pipette tip. Here I'm ejecting the protein concentra concentrate into the well. I add a lid and connect it to the power pack and I will run initially at 100 volts for 20 minutes and after that at 200 volts for around 40 minutes. You see so-called marker proteins at different molecular weights at the left hand side. They are also colored. After running the gels I can open up the gel and add it to the white tray. I wash the glass plates immediately because acrylamide when dry sticks to it and it is very difficult to remove. The next part of the experiment is designed in order to make the protein migrate from inside the gel onto a surface, a so-called PVDF membrane and I have to produce a sandwich. I first add a sponge then some blotting paper and now I use a glass plate in order to transfer the gel on top of the blotting paper. The gel is quite fragile so I have to be very careful. Now the negatively charged proteins are inside the gel. The next step is to add the PVDF membrane. The PVDF membrane has to be orientated towards a positive electrode because the negatively charged proteins inside the gel will migrate towards a positive electrode and the PVDF membrane is in that direction and thus the proteins will end up on the PVDF membrane. It is important to remove all air bubbles or water reservoirs from in between the gel and the PVDF membrane. I finish off the sandwich by adding one more blotting paper. And a sponge. And I use a pen to squeeze out excessive water. I add it into the transfer apparatus and I have transfer buffer inside. I'm adding the lid now, put everything on ice and I put it into the power pack. I run for two hours at 350 milliamps. The resistance is quite high as a result heat will develop, that's why I put the whole thing on ice. At the end of the transfer I open up the sandwich and I see immediately that the marker proteins have transferred because they are colored. For all the other proteins, I add the PVDF membrane to so-called PONCO stain, which is a reversible protein stain. I'm washing off the excessive PONCO and I see bands. These are all the proteins that have transferred onto the PVDF membrane. The heavy protein should be at on the top 
of the PVDF membrane and the light proteins at the bottom. I'm cutting off excessive parts of the PVDF membrane where no protein has transferred and I'm adding the PVDF membrane to so-called blocking buffer. The blocking buffer is made out of 5% milk powder and TBST and I'm agitating for one hour. The aim of the blocking step is to block all unspecific binding sites. Now I'm adding the primary antibody which is designed to only detect my protein of interest and I put it into the fridge overnight. The next morning I start with three washes with TBST. TBST stands for Trif Befford Saline with Tween. It is used for washing to make a blocking buffer and antibodies. I have three washes, five minutes each. Here I'm preparing the secondary antibody. The secondary antibody is designed to bind to the primary antibody. If the primary antibody against my protein is raised into, again, in rabbit, then the secondary antibody is against all rabbit antibodies. The secondary antibody is conjugated to a reaction that allows me to detect the location of the primary and secondary antibody. After one hour incubation at room temperature, I'm now adding a substrate. In this case, the secondary antibody has been conjugated with false radish peroxidase. Here I'm adding a substrate, which by horse radish peroxidase days, is turned into a light emitting product. So wherever my original protein is, there will be light emission. I'm removing excessive substrate and add the PVDF membrane carefully onto a plastic foil. I'm sealing the plastic foil, add it to x-ray cassette and here in a dark room I'm adding x-ray film. So where the light emission is there will be an exposure of the x-ray film and I'm developing the x-ray film. We have an automatic developer but it can be done by hand. Here is the end result which is an exposed and developed x-ray film. You see bands on all of the three gels. I'm labeling the gel, the identity of the sample. I am labeling the weight of the molecular weight markers, the date and the exposure time. And that is the end of the experiment. Here are the bands. I hope you have enjoyed that. If you're interested in the MSU molecular exercise physiology, please email me. Thanks.